Hey, welcome to the Sunshine Tent. This is the tent where Jesus, the Son of God, shines. So let's begin with prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for shining in our lives. We ask for your blessing on this lesson. How? Christian believers are like tomatoes. We thank you, Lord. We're looking forward to seeing how we're like tomatoes. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Okay, so, Christian believers are like tomatoes. <laughs> it's into tomato fest, we had to do something tomatoly. So, Christian believers are like tomatoes. And we're going to see in the old farmer's almanac, the good old farmer's almanac, how you take care of a tomato plant, and in the Bible, how you become a believing Christian and take care of young Christians. So Christian believers are like tomatoes. So what does the almanac say about tomatoes? And what does the Bible say about believers? Well, the first thing we know that's important is that tomatoes need abundant light. That's why they do so well in Texas. They need a lot of light. I don't know. I mean, I haven't looked it up, but I don't know how well tomatoes would grow in England, in London, or in Ireland. But they do real well in Jacksonville because there's lots of light. And tomatoes need a lot of water. That's why we have a soaker hose around this tomato plant because they need a lot of water. So we're going to look at what does the farmer's almanac say about tomatoes and what does the Bible say about believers? Because there's a lot of things that are the same. If you're raising tomatoes or you're raising Christian believers, there's a lot of things that are the same. Harold, could you read this one? To ensure the plants grow stocky, not spindly, keep the young plants only a couple of inches from fluorescent grow lights. Okay, that's what we saw here. Fluorescent grow lights. And the young plants are really, really close to the grow lights. Because they need a lot lot of light. And what does the Bible say about believers? Then Jesus spoke out again, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So Jesus is a grow light, isn't he? Jesus is a grow light. And he is for for Christians, for believers, what grow lights are for tomatoes. We have to stay really close to Him. And if we bask in His light, we will grow. They need to be watered well. What does the Farmer's Almanac say about tomatoes? Water well about two inches per week. Feel the soil. If the top inch is dry, it's time to water. All right, so I bought a plant just for this occasion. And it has a lot of things wrong with it. I could have bought the good plant. There was a good plant next to it that was perfectly healthy. But I decided to buy this one because it had some of the problems we're going to be talking about today. But the first thing we need to know is if the ground, if the soil's dry. And this one's still a little muddy, but that's good. That's good. But sometimes Christian believers can get a little dry. Right? It's been a while since you've prayed. It's been a long time since you've been in His Word. We get to be dry. And we need to be watered in the Word of God. How would you read this one? But no one who drinks the water I give will ever be thirsty again. The water I give is like a flowing fountain that gives eternal life. Right, so when we begin to feel spiritually dry, we need to go to Jesus. Because He's able to water us. We need to go to Jesus. We need to pray. We need to speak to Him. We need to worship Him. We need to get into His Word. And He says He is like water for the soul. Do you 
just like my plant needs water, real water, regular water in the soil. Jesus is water for the soul. We're also going to find out, as I studied my farmer's almanac, that a handy rock helps your tomato plants. If you can find a rock, that will help your tomato plants. Let's see. Harold, what does the farmer's almanac say? To help tomatoes through a drought, place flat rocks next to the plant. The rocks pull water up from under the ground and keep it from evaporating. All right, so Texas can get dry, right? It can get hot. We can have droughts. And if there is a drought time, a very hard time, try putting some flat rocks around your tomato plant. What does that do? It keeps the water from evaporating, but it also helps draw up the deeper waters. And so the top, the top soil might be dry, but that rock will draw up the deeper waters to water that plant. All right, so what then does the Bible say about believers? They all drank the same spiritual water. They drank from the spiritual rock that went with them. That rock was Christ. So the rock was Christ. So what we learn here is stay close to Jesus. You need that rock. And when there are bad times, when there are hard times, when there are drought times, He will draw the waters. Even when everyone else is thirsty. Even when there seems no reason that we ought to be rejoicing. If you stay near to the rock, stay close to Jesus, He can draw deeper waters. And sometimes people wonder, how can Christians be so happy in hard times? It's because we can find water in deeper places. You stay close to Jesus, you can find deep water even during hard times. Now I also learned from my farmer's almanac that to grow good tomatoes, you have to have loamy soil. I didn't know what that meant, but you have to have loamy soil. And I found, I figured out, it's exactly what East Texas has. Plenty of loamy soil. There's some silt, there's some clay, but there's a whole lot of sand. And that sand keeps the soil fresh because it drains through and, and it needs new water every day because it, it easily drains away and it doesn't puddle. Also, if, if you have a problem with fresh water, you might get what's called end rot on your tomatoes. And we don't want end rot on our tomatoes. So let's talk about loamy soil first. Soil type loamy drinks water well-drained soil. And the Bible says, A good person who gives into evil is like a muddy spring or a dirty well. Right, so that water has to be fresh. The, uh, yesterday's uh, water drains away fresh water every day. Fresh water. If you are a mud puddle, <laughs> and you might have started with good water, but you let all kinds of things come into your life, before you know it, you've got mosquitoes and disease. It's a mud puddle. So you need that loamy soil. Yesterday's water is gone. I need fresh water today. What does that mean? It means I need to go to Jesus fresh every day. Every day. I need to go to His Word. Go to Him in prayer. I need to be with Jesus in a fresh way every day. Keep my soil loamy. No stinky, stagnant puddles. Now, if we don't water, what happens? Irregular watering. Missing a week <laughs> trying to make up for it leads to blossom end rot and cracking. Do you remember that picture of the end rot? Mommy! Blossom end rot. That's what that is, end rot. That's what that is. Blossom end rot. We don't want that. 
in our Christian lives we don't want disease. What does this verse say? Oh God, you are my God, and I long for you. My whole being desires you. Like a dry, worn out, waterless land, my soul is thirsty for you. Alright, so this is... <laughs> Two doggies. It says missing even a week and then trying to make up for it causes loss of men run. And uh, don't we try to do that with the Lord? We say, oh, I'm going to be close to the Lord. I'm going to read the word. I'm going to pray. And then we slack off. And then you miss a week or two or a month or a year. And then he said, now I'm going to pray real hard and make up for it. You can't make up for it. There's a possibility you can get blossom and heart. And so the psalmist says, God, I long for you. My whole being desires you. We thirst and, and have a, a, a deep desire to, to have our thirst quenched. And only Jesus can quench that thirst. And don't miss a day, let alone a week. <laughs> We're going to talk about movement and mulch. This is young plants, and they're being raised in the nursery, the plant nursery. And we're going to learn what they've learned about what they need to do for the young plants in the nursery. And this is after you transplant them outside and you put the mulch around them. The first movement. Could you read this? If growing them indoors provide a breeze for your tomatoes. Isn't that interesting? They figured out that the tomatoes need to be in a breeze. They would put them in nurseries and they didn't have any breeze for them. They had plenty of light, plenty of water, plenty of fertilizer, but the tomatoes weren't doing well. Wow. They weren't doing well because they needed a breeze. They actually need to move. They need to sway in the breeze. Now what does the Bible say about believers? Wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So the Bible says that the Spirit of God is a breeze for the soul. Our souls need a breeze, and that breeze is the Spirit of God. And as long as the Holy Spirit is moving over our souls and moving us, are we moved by God? When we think about Jesus dying on the cross for us, does it move us? Or do we say, big deal? Does it move us? We need to be moved by the Holy Spirit. He needs to be like a breeze on our soul. And it must move us. We must care. We need to know that God loves us. Sent His only Son to die for us. Does that move you? Does it move your soul? And the Holy Spirit wants us to be moved. We need that. We need sometimes to get in a quiet place, or a noisy place, and just think about Jesus and be moved. Let the Spirit of God blow across our souls and be moved. And also, believers need to be moved to action and not just sit and do nothing because they will stagnate like those baby plants. We need to be moved to action. What does the Farmer's Almanac say? Cover the ground with two to four inches of mulch to minimize weeds and help keep the soil evenly moist. Farmer's Almanac says you might want to put some mulch on your tomato plants. 
and it covers the ground around your tomato plant. What does the Bible say about believers? When you pray, go into a room alone and close the door. Pray to your father in private, and he knows what you've done in private, and he will reward you. Okay, so we're burying, burying the um, roots around that plant under some mulch to keep the water in and to keep the weeds out. That's exactly what prayer does for a believer. Bury yourself in a quiet place before the Lord. Get down in a room, close the door, turn off all the TVs and radios, and just pray. Just pray like you're buried under that mulch, and that'll keep you watered, and that will keep the weeds out. And, and the weeds are the cares of this world. And if we just stay in that place before the Lord, buried under that mulch, it keeps the weeds and the cares of the world out. Okay, beware of a hard frost. That upside down tomatoes. Can we see that again? Sure. What does the Farmer's Almanac say about tomatoes? When the first hard frost threatens, pull the plant and hang it upside down in a basement. Alright, you still have some unharvested tomatoes on your plants, but you hear on the news there's going to be a hard frost. Farmer's Almanac says take them out of the ground, bring them in the house, turn them upside down in your basement. All right, how does that apply to a Christian's life? What does the Bible say? If my own people will humbly pray and turn back to me and stop sinning, then I will answer them from heaven, I will forgive them. There's just times we need to get down on our face before God. If you hear that hard times are coming, you hear from the landlord the mortgage is due and you don't have the money, or you hear that hard, hard things are happening, it might be time to just go down in the basement and get down in your face and humble yourself before God and pray. The young tomatoes need support. And there's two kinds of support for a tomato. This one here is the cage. This is the cage type. And this is the stake. And just tying the plant directly to a stake. And we're going to see what's the difference here. Staking keeps developing tomato fruit off the ground while caging lets the plant hold itself up right Okay. So you see, the stake has more support. It's just holding on to the plant tightly while the cage is learning to grow and hold itself, but it's got a little support from the cage. What does the Bible tell us? So encourage each other and help each other grow stronger in faith, just as you are already doing. Okay, so all Christians, and especially young Christians, need support, don't they? Don't we all? And maybe somebody might need to be staked. Uh -huh. I mean, maybe they're coming out from being a, a drug addict, and, and their temptation is still very strong and they've just come to Christ and you need to call them every day. How are you doing? Can I come over and pray with you? Very close attention and just very strong support. But every believer needs to be caged. We need the saints around us all the time, just caring and offering support, but at the same time, growing strong and able to stand on our own. Okay, we also read that a 
it's important to go deep in your Christian faith. Well, no, the tomato goes deep in the ground. Wow. You see how deep this is? Wow. How much of this plant is underground? Very little of it is on top. <laughs> what does the farmer's almanac say? Plant your tomato plants deeper than they come in the pot, all the way up to the top few leaves. Okay, so if I was to plant this tomato plant in the ground, According to the farmer's almanac, I should take all these branches off and plant it all the way down up to here. Wow. Because uh, roots grow from the whole stem. Once it's underground, the roots will start to grow from the whole stem. But believers are like this. They need to be deep. Your faith needs to be deeper and deeper and deeper. And I hear that this isn't true for any plant, but it's true for tomatoes. So flee youthful desires and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So everyone who calls on the Lord needs to do this. It says, pursue righteousness. Go deeper. Pursue faith. You have faith. You need deeper faith. You need more faith. You have love, but Lord, help me love more. I need to go deeper. You have peace, but you need more peace. Every day of your Christian walk, go deeper and deeper in your walk. learned you need to give tomatoes room to grow you can see here they're planting them it looks like about two feet apart even though they're small they're giving each one plenty of room to grow <laughs> give each plant enough room to grow crowded conditions <laughs> inhibit their growth and lead to disease Okay, so if the plants don't have enough room to grow, two things will happen. They'll stop growing, and they may even become diseased. What does the scripture say? Equipping the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son growing into maturity. So every Christian is still growing from the time you become a believer, you're still growing. And we're all coming to maturity. We don't start at maturity. And as we get out more and more growth, we need more and more room to grow. And so the Bible says we need to equip the saints to grow and to be built up and to be used. Yes. And we need to give each and every believer a full opportunity to be used of God and to grow in the faith. <laughs> now we all know this. Tomatoes are not all the same. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There's different levels of maturity and there's different varieties and people that are called to different things. Tomatoes grow in all sizes from tiny currant to cherry to large beefsteak. A body is made up of many parts and each of them has its own use, Romans 12.4. 
And they say, just like with Christians, everybody has their own purpose. Even with tomatoes, they all have different uses. You'll put the cherry tomatoes in your salad. You'll, you'll put the big tomatoes, you slice. Some tomatoes are only good for tomato paste. And Christians are like that. They just all have a different purpose in the Lord. And now preparing the ground. You see this one is deep in the soil. And the soil, so in order to plant these plants, as deep as they need to go in the soil, you have to prepare the soil. If you have really hard, dry soil, you can't put your plant in it. You have to dig and, and till that soil and make it soft and make it ready for plants. What does the farmer's almanac say about tomatoes? He turned back. I have something to say about okay. deep soil. I just, I just thought, I just realized that some people think you, you, you know you can go too far being a Christian. Uh, uh, but this thing is, this is deep in the soil. Yes. You go too far in, in burying the tomato plant, no. and you can't go too far in being lost in, in Jesus. Yes. Amen. Okay, so what does the Farmer's Almanac say about preparing the soil? Till soil to about one foot and mix in fertilizer. Okay, so till the soil, that means break it up, break up all that hard soil. You don't want to put your tender plants in that hard soil. Now what does the Bible say about believers? Plow up the hard ground of your hearts, for now is the time to seek the Lord, that He may come and shower righteousness upon you. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. If your heart is hard, if it's faithless, if you don't want to believe, if you refuse to believe, if your heart is hard, then the Lord can't plant salvation there. But if you want the Lord to plant salvation and belief and faith, plow up that hard land. Plow up that hard ground. Be willing to look at yourself and say, maybe I'm a sinner. Maybe I do need forgiveness. Maybe I do need the Lord. Plow up that hard ground. And then the Lord, uh, and, and seek the Lord. Amen. It's time to get on your face. It's time to say, Lord, I do need you. I admit it now. And when that land is, is plowed up and soft, God can use it. God can then plant his life in your heart. Sheba! Teddy bear. That's a lot of maintenance. Uh, yes. Yeah, we pay for it. We don't do it. <laughs> I understand that. And the groomers, when, the, when they see us coming, they close the, the sign on the door to close. Yeah, they're just like, oh. <laughs> not cheap. Yeah. I love what you're talking about. I love that people need to hear that. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to see that tomatoes have a bit of a challenge to overcome. What does a farmer's almanac say? The soil, pH of the soil needs to be acidic, not alkaline. Right, acidic soil, not alkaline. So it's not a breeze. It's not uh, It's not base neutral soil. It's acidic. And tomatoes might like it, but we don't like it. We don't like it when our lives are a little bit hard, a little bit acidic. Burn. Burn. What does the Bible say? For you, God, test us. You refined us as silver is refined. So he gives believers challenges. It isn't just a smooth ride. We wouldn't grow if we didn't have some challenges. And sometimes walking the walk of faith is a challenge now and then. And we get on our face and we go to God. And we, because the soil's a little acidic, it keeps us before our Lord. But he wants us to be fruitful. This plant, I, I want it to be fruitful. It's starting a little bit, and I hope it does a whole lot more. 
What does the bio, what does the almanac say? With proper care, this vining plant will produce a bumper crop. All right, with proper care, the farmer's almanac tells me, this plant will produce a bumper crop. Pretty good already. I hope so, because I'm not really very good at taking care of plants, so uh, this poor little thing got to belong to me. So I hope I'm, I learned from my farmer's almanac and produce a bumper crop. But what did the Bible say about believers? You didn't choose me, but I chose you. I have appointed you to go to produce fruit. Okay, I have appointed you to go to produce fruit. So believers, like just like the tomato plant, this was made to reproduce, wasn't it? We were made to reproduce in Christ. We weren't made to just be believers all by ourselves, but to lead others to Christ and reproduce and be fruitful. What else does the farmer's almanac say? Leave your tomatoes on the vine as long as possible. As long as possible. So, some of these I'm going to just leave a little bit longer. They haven't been on the vine quite long enough. And what does the Bible say? Hey, what is it? I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. All right, so he said we would be fruitful, but he also said that he is the vine, that's in the middle here, and we are the branches. Now if I take off one of these branches, Sorry, little plant. Uh oh. Alright, I just took that branch off. It's no longer on the vine. Is it going to bear fruit? No. Am I ever going to get cherries off of this branch? No. I mean, tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. It's not going to bear fruit. Is it even going to stay alive? No. You have to stay on the vine. And Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Cling to me. Stay with me. Never try to pull yourself away from me. And if you stay with me and cling to me, you will be fruitful. Now tomatoes, of course, feed the hungry. That's what they're for. They look pretty too, but they also feed the hungry. Spanish explorers returned home from the New World with tomatoes. Wealthy people believed that the fruits were poisonous. Only the peasants were brave and hungry enough to eat them. All right, so when they first brought tomatoes from America back to Spain, the rich people wouldn't eat them. And the the so the um the higher in authority, the politicals wouldn't eat them. And the kings and queens wouldn't eat them. Why? They thought they were poisonous. But the poor people were hungry. And because the poor people were hungry, they went ahead and ate the tomatoes. And what did they find out? Tomatoes are good. <laughs> tomatoes are wonderful. Tomatoes are delicious. And so it was first the poor people that were interested in tomatoes and the rich people, the nobility, said, oh, I don't know, I, I think that might be poisonous to me. But what does the Bible say about believers? Brothers, consider your calling. Not many are wise from a human perspective, not many powerful, not many of noble birth. Right, so he says, Christians, look around. Look around in churches. What are you going to find? Rich people? No. Super powerful people? Probably not. Maybe one or two. Not many. 
Are you going to find a bunch of poor people? Are you going to find a bunch of people who were down and out? Are you going to find a bunch of people who were sick? A bunch of people who were addicted, alcoholic, drug addicts? That's the church. That's the church of Jesus Christ. A bunch of poor, broken people. Why? Because the rich people and the people in authority looked at Jesus and said, I don't think I want him. No, 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 no. He might change my life. But the broken people and the poor people were hungry. They felt their spiritual hunger. And they said, let me try Jesus. And when they tried Jesus, they found that he was good. Yum. Jesus is wonderful. And so, no, not many rich people, many poor people, broken people, sick people come to Christ. And that's what the church looks like. And Jesus takes them and he loves them. And he brings them back to health. And he brings them back to spiritual wealth. And we, and we who love the Lord say, he is delicious. He is good. He feeds. He feeds the hungry. And you got you have to be hungry to watch him. And a lot of times if you're rich and famous, you don't feel your hunger. But when you're down and out, you begin to feel your hunger and you come to Jesus. <laughs> now, the farmer's almanac tells us, and that's one reason why I bought this plant because of the problems that it has, that sometimes tomatoes will develop a couple problems like bottom hangers and suckers. First, we're going to look at the bottom hangers. Blight is a fungal disease. Remove the leaves from the bottom. Being close to the ground, soil pathogens splash onto them. All right, so they have what they call early blight and late blight, early in the season and late season. And it's exactly what this plant has. It, I don't know if it's early blight or late blight. But it happens in the bottom leaves. The leaves closest to the bottom, as you see here. And it's because of the germs and pathogens in the soil. When you, when you water the plant, they come up onto the leaves. And if the bottom leaves, closest to the soil, are the first to be infected. But eventually, that infection works its way up the plant. And we even have a, a few little signs of it at the very top here. So what does the Bible tell us about this? Don't love the world or anything that belongs to the world. If you love the world, you cannot love the Father. Right, so I would call that bottom hangers. If you're a believer, if you're a Christian, but you still love the world, that's like hanging down here too close to the dirt. You just are just too close to the dirt. You want to be a tomato plant, but you also want to stay close to the dirt. You want to be a believer, but you want to stay close to the world. And you're likely to be the first to be infected by some kind of spiritual disease, like unbelief. Uh, uh, or worldliness because you are bottom hanger hanging too close to the dirt yes. and then sometimes it spreads oh, yeah. even to those uh, as, as we influence others in the church like a rotten apple practice crop rotation from year to year to prevent diseases that may have over winter right this is about when your tomatoes have disease, you think, well, maybe after the winter's over, that we'll just start, uh, we'll just plant those tomatoes again, and it'll be fine. It won't be fine. They can actually, what they call, overwinter. 
that is hang on to that disease all through the winter. And what is recommended is that you pull them all out, till the soil again, and start anew. And we need to do that sometimes. What does the Bible say? Change your hearts and lives. Turn back to God so that your sins may be wiped away. It says you need a complete change. You can't just hope it gets better after a while. You need a total makeover. You need to repent. You need to go on your face before God. You need to seek His forgiveness. You need a total rotation. Pinch and remove suckers that develop in the joint. They won't bear fruit and will take energy away from the rest of the plant. Okay, suckers, we have some on this plant. I looked over. There's a sucker right here. We'll go back to the picture. And that's these little growths in the stem of the plant. The problem with suckers is they're taking life from the plant, but they will never bear any fruit themselves. And so what does the Bible tell us? For we hear that there are some among you who are idle. They are not busy, but busy bodies. Okay. So a believer might just be a sucker. <laughs> I need this and I need that and I need this. And they never give back to the community. Never refrigerate. One thing you do not want to do is refrigerate fruit. Never ever refrigerate fruit. It says never refrigerate tomatoes because temperatures below 55 degrees cause the precious flavor compounds to break down. That's what the Farmer's Almanac says about tomatoes. What does the Bible say? It says because disobedience will expand, the love of many will grow cold. And just like tomatoes don't do well in the cold, Christians that get cold don't do well in the Lord. Which brings me to this. Is Jesus speaking to you? The scripture says, They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Two disciples are talking about when Jesus came and talked to them. And they said, It feels like our heart got warmer when Jesus was talking to us. An old preacher by the name of John Wesley said, The preacher was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ. And I felt my heart strangely warmed. Jesus makes his presence known by a still, small voice. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. Like this it says here, prayer is knocking on God's door. We need to pray and knock on the door. Sometimes we, we call it a sinner's prayer. We've never turned our lives over to Jesus before. This is a prayer we can pray when we're ready to admit we are sinners and everybody's a sinner. When we're ready to admit that we're sinners and need Christ's forgiveness. It's just a matter of time until we come to that place where we are ready to, sometimes we have to get so low in our lives before we're ready to admit what is true for every human being on the planet, that we need Christ's forgiveness. And this prayer must be prayed with faith in our hearts. It's like a leap of faith. Even if we've never been raised in church before, it's a leap of faith. We say, Jesus, if you're real, give me a hand. And we have to have a readiness 
in our lives to have God change our life. We need to take a leap of faith and also a readiness because Jesus changes lives. We don't continue the same way we were. So, you can pray this prayer of faith if you've never have before. If you never prayed Jesus come into my life before, you can pray it. If you pray Jesus come into my life in the past, but you, you think it would mean more today, you can say, Jesus, come into my life today. You've been walking far off from Jesus and you want to come back. It's called backsliding. It's an old-fashioned term, but it means you've been maybe raised in church and you love the Lord, but you just haven't been in church a long time and you haven't, uh, uh, you, you haven't uh, prayed for a long time. You can do that now. You want to set an example. And show others how it's done. That's what we are doing right here, right now. We just like to give your heart to Jesus again and again and again. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, why are we doing this? Why are we here? We declare our faith publicly because Jesus declared his love publicly. Jesus hung on the cross. He declared his love for the entire world by hanging on the cross publicly. And the Bible talks about this. He says, if you stand before others and are willing to say, you believe in me, then I will tell my Father in heaven that you belong to me. That's the deal we have with Jesus. If we're willing to say, yes, Jesus, and admit it, make that confession, <coughs> then Jesus will make his confession before God in heaven. <coughs> so, three important questions. Number one, do you want to know Jesus as your Savior right now? Number two, do you believe he died to save you from your sins and that he rose from the dead? That's the miracle that proves that what's in the Bible is true. And finally, do you believe that he's here right now? Because God is, is everywhere at the same time. He's here right now waiting to save you. If you're not saved, Jesus is here waiting to save you. Now, this is a prayer that we just put together. But it just will give you an idea of what you want to pray. And if you want to pray that prayer with us right now, you can pray it to yourself right now. I'm just going to pray out loud. <coughs> the prayer of a sinner is turning to Jesus. Dear Jesus, I know that I have sinned against you and that my sins separate me from you. That's what sin does. It separates man from God. I am truly sorry. Right now, I turn away from my sinful past. That's what we need to do. We need to, re that's what the word repent means. I turn away from my sinful past. Please forgive me and help me to keep from sin. I believe you died for my sins. That's what we believe. That's the step of faith that we take. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose from the dead. You are alive and you hear this prayer from my heart. That's the prayer of faith that we pray if we want Jesus to come into our lives. I invite you, Jesus, to be my Savior and the Lord of my life. I want you to rule my life. He's in charge. He's the king. He's going to rule our lives from now on. So, two t-shirts here. The Who Am I t-shirt and the Child of God t-shirt. <coughs> Which t-shirt do you want? I want this t-shirt. I want the Child of God t-shirt. But some people did accept him. They believed in him. And he gave them the right to become children of God. That's what the cross is all about. We get the t-shirt. We get the child of God t-shirt. I mean, I don't really have a t-shirt, but you get the message. New creation. Just like this plant is a creation of God, we can be a new creation of God. 
therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new, little by little. There is a transformation that takes place in the believer's life. You will be transformed if you openly say, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. <laughs> so, what did we learn today? We learned a lot about tomatoes. A lot about tomatoes, and we learned that tomatoes are like Christian believers. It's, ter it's a terrific story. I've been thinking that God is he's, hes wonderful. He gives us wonderful illustrations from nature that we are like other parts of His creation, but that we also need to tell people that we can give ourselves to God when the time is right. So let's close in prayer now. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Jesus, that you're so wonderful and that you can come into anyone's life as long as we take that step of faith and ask you, Jesus, to come in and are willing to make you the ruler of our life. We thank you for today. We ask for continued strength and we ask to continue that your Holy Spirit will reach out to those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.